When the Boeing 777X enters commercial service next year, you're probably going to be flying on the longer Dash 9 variant. And the reason for this is quite simple. Very few airlines are buying the smaller Dash 8. In fact, only 43 Dash 8 passenger variants have been ordered from the entire 777X family, of which 541 have been ordered to date. Even though Emirates made a large order of 35 Dash 8s, further interest in the jet has dried up as the most recent order was placed almost two years ago. The Dash 8 is the shortest variant of the 777X family, with 6 meters less fuselage length than the Dash 9. But seeing as it can seat up to 380 passengers in a single class configuration, the Dash 8 is the perfect replacement for the 300ER, with even more range and improved fuel efficiency. Because the older 777 variants were such a success, it does seem strange as to why the Dash 8 isn't meeting expectations. After all, the market for ultra long haul travel is still massive, even after the pandemic and with fuel prices remaining at an all time high. Despite all this, the recent surge in travel demand is forcing airlines to look for replacement aircraft for their aging wide bodies and to future proof their fleets. The 777X is the perfect option to do this. As mentioned earlier, it is more fuel efficient than all the 777 variants, thanks to its redesigned wing built entirely out of carbon fibre giving a better strength to weight ratio in addition to the wings being much bigger as well. So big in fact that the 777X requires folding wingtips to fit into most airport gates. The second way efficiency is improved is through its new engines, the GE9X. This engine is the most powerful turbofan in the world, capable of delivering up to 130,000 pounds of thrust, surpassing its predecessor the GE90 which was also a record holder, being rated at 115,000 pounds of thrust and exclusively powering the 300ER and 200LR worldliner. The fuel efficiency improvements of the 777X compared to the 300ER are estimated to be about 13% when accounted for the redesigned wing, higher passenger capacity and the new engines which offer about 10% reduced fuel consumption. In addition to being easier and cheaper to maintain than the GE90s, again adding to the reduction in operating cost. But despite all the benefits, Boeing is struggling to sell the jet to airlines and this is because the Dash 8 suffers from two major issues, the first of which I will explain now. Bad timing renders the 777-8 somewhat pointless. As mentioned earlier, the Dash 8 is set to replace the 300ER, but at the minute, airlines don't really need to do that. You see, the 300ER is still capable of making a healthy profit on most routes, and replacing a perfectly good airplane with another new one would be both pointless and expensive, setting an airline back $410 million per unit to be exact. Added to this the need for bigger aircraft sooner, and by the time the Dash 8 was ready to be considered seriously, airlines had already pivoted towards the A350 family, which was both cheaper and allowed the airline to get their hands on a new jet effective immediately. The 300ER is still quite young, considering it entered service in 2004, and once it needs to be replaced in let's say 10 years or so, who knows what the aviation industry will look like and airlines may consider the 777X too old to purchase brand new for fleet refurbishment and future proofing. The next issue is a little more complex as it involves poor airframe optimization. Let's pause for a moment and take a look at the 787 Dreamliner, which is the perfect example of the point I'm trying to make. Airframe optimization refers to the matching of an aircraft's structural design, for example the fuselage, wings and engines, to its intended mission profile, such as range, passenger capacity or performance. This is important because a well-optimized airframe leads to less drag, less weight and eliminates structural overbuild or underperformance, all of which contribute to fuel savings and increased efficiency. The 787-8 has the shortest fuselage, while the Dash 10 variant is the longest, with a difference of about 11 meters. The Dash 9, however, sits between them in terms of length. It's important to note that all three aircraft here use exactly the same engines and wings and the 787-8 was actually designed first. And although it has good takeoff performance, it is slightly overpowered for its size. The Dash 10, however, while it has good passenger capacity, has reduced takeoff performance due to the increased weight, and also has to sacrifice some fuel capacity and therefore range. The Dash 9, however, is the sweet spot. It has almost perfect weight distribution, and the engines and wings are perfect for its fuselage size. And this is the main reason for why the Dash 9 has the highest order count of the entire Dreamliner family. If you understand this, then the same logic applies to the 777X family, with the 777-8 having the worst airframe optimization. Let's not forget that Qatar and Emirates are two of the biggest customers for the 777X, both of which operate in the Middle East, 
meaning less thrust is generated due to the air being less dense. This reduces lift, decreases takeoff performance, and sometimes forces the airplane to reduce weight to be able to take off. This meant Boeing needed to design the plane with bigger wings and engines, which unfortunately make the plane heavier, meaning the Dash 8 is definitely overbuilt and will negatively affect the economics. Airlines saw this issue, and seeing as the Dash 8 is up against the likes of the mighty A350-1000 and even the 787-10, it's a no-brainer to go with the cheaper, more capable competition instead of the 777-8. It's important to note that the A350 is a clean sheet, all composite design, meaning it is much lighter than the 777-8, which has an aluminium fuselage. And now you might be wondering why didn't Boeing build the 777X out of carbon composite material, just like the A350 and 787. Well, at the time of designing the 777-X, the 787 had just gone into service. And while today it is one of the most successful aircraft ever built, it initially faced numerous delays and problems leading to additional tens of billions of dollars in development costs. And the benefits of using aluminium such as reduced cost, ease of manufacture and fewer delays ultimately outweighed the efficiency savings and the increased cost associated with a carbon composite airframe. Initially, Boeing were considering using a derivative of standard aerospace grade aluminium called Ally, which is an alloy of aluminium and lithium, which is about one tenth lighter than normal aluminium. Today, Ally is proving to be a brilliant substitute for traditional aluminium, with the likes of the Airbus A220 using an all-ally fuselage. But, just like using carbon fibre to build the 777X, a new material would increase development time and cost, as it would need to undergo additional testing and therefore delay the programme even more. But even so, maybe Boeing should have used Ally to build the 777X? Leave a comment below with your thoughts. One key feature of the 777-8 that I've left out until now is its astronomical range, 8,800 nautical miles to be exact. If we compare that with the range of the 777-300ER, which the Dash 8 is set to replace, along with the A350-900ULR, we can see that it sits quite nicely between the two, and could compete potentially with an A350-1000ULR, which is to be introduced to commercial service next year, and is the outcome of the Airbus Qantas partnership in developing ultra-long-haul high density routes, specifically Qantas's Project Sunrise, which will see new routes like London to Sydney open up, with a total flight time of nearly 22 hours in the air. And even though the 777-8 may not be able to fly this specific route, it will be in a good spot to capture some market share of next generation ultra long haul travel. The next bit of information which I've hidden until now is how many cargo variants have been ordered. There have been more cargo variants ordered versus actual passenger jets. 59 to be exact. In 2022, Boeing launched the 777-8 freighter, and it's picked up more orders in a third of the time than the passenger variant, highlighting the interest of many cargo operators like Silkway and Cargolux, in addition to standard airline cargo haulage such as Qatar Airways and Lufthansa Cargo. Many cargo airlines are looking for new jets to replace their aging fleets of MD-11s and 747-200s and 400s, mainly due to emissions and noise, and the Dash 8 has similar payload capacity, on top of its better fuel economy and much better range. Having mentioned range though, the freighter market isn't that fussed on non-stop capability. They prioritise payload capacity and availability instead. Having considered this, it seems that a further stretch of the cargo variant could actually perform quite well, and thus the 777-10 is born. With even more payload capacity, it will fill the gap in Boeing's lineup after the 747-8 freighter, the last of which was built in 2023 for Atlas Air. This will also allow Boeing to steal a share of the market from Airbus who are aiming to have the A350-1000 freighter in service by 2027. And you might think this would take too long, that the Dash 10 would be years behind the A350 freighter. But according to Boeing's head of commercial aircraft, it wouldn't actually be that difficult to stretch the jet. But for now, this is just pure speculation. And when it's all said and done, nobody knows what's going to happen in the near future. But unfortunately for the Dash 8, bad timing and oversized features means that flying on the passenger variant will likely be a rarity. And the same can be said for the 747. But the success of the jumbo jet in the air cargo market could be hinting at a bright future for the 777-8. The fact you've made it to the end of the video shows you don't have the attention span of a toddler. So please leave a comment with your thoughts down below and give me some feedback on the video as this helps me make better videos in the future. If you did enjoy this video, then do make sure to check out this one as well. And I will see you over there.